All right, good evening, everybody. Um, I want to thank everybody for attending the webinar tonight. Uh, I'm going to be talking about high frequency vibration for all orthodontic cases. Uh, I've actually been using uh, vibrational devices for probably about three and a half years now. First, starting with Excel, Excel, but then switching over to V Pro 5, just a little over a year, probably about a year and a half ago. All right. So, um, anybody has questions later on after the webinar, you feel free to email me. My email address is at the bottom of the screen here, E-L-I-N at OSGB.com. All right. So just in uh, full disclosure, um, I just want to make sure everybody understands I'm not employed by any dental company. I do own stock in one of the technologies we'll be talking about, EZRX, all right, um, but nothing else. I do not have a family member who's employed by or owns any stock in any interest in any dental company. I have consulted for several companies over the years, uh, including Propel, Imaging Sciences, SureSmile, American Orthodontics, 3 Shape, U-Lab, and Ormco. Okay. Uh, I just want everybody to be aware I have been compensated in the past for consulting and or evaluating products for the sponsors, including Propel Orthodontics. You know, it's just for my, my uh, time and getting everything ready. Um, I uh, have received uh, honorarium. I will be receiving an honorarium from Propel for tonight's webinar. The opinions expressed in this present presentation are my own views and uh, may not necessarily reflect the views of the policies of the sponsor. Materials provided are for educational use and are not to be used for advertising and product endorsement purposes. This presentation has been approved for continuing education credits. No photographs, video, or audio recordings are permitted during the presentation. All right, just a little bio about me. You know, I've been uh, involved in digital technology since actually since 1999. I've lectured internationally. I've been on the uh, AAO CTEC committee. I'm on the clinical advisory board for both SureSmile American Orthodontics, um, and also on the editorial uh, board for Orthotown and Orthodontic Practice US. All right, so what we're going to be talking about today is high frequency vibration. Uh, we're going to first cover a vibrational science review. How does high frequency vibration work? The devices, and I'm going to show my own cases too as well. All right. So, you know, technology obviously, was, without a doubt, has been a driving force in our profession for quite some time now. And we are now talking about digital ecosystems and how they're changing not just, uh, just our practice, but overall the entire world. Um, you know, we digital workflow is a very um, coined phrase right now. But I think it should be really truly labeled as digitally enabled workflow since every patient ultimately needs a treatment outcome that is not digital, it has to be managed by a clinician. So while technology can make us more efficient and effective, it will not replace actual dentists. All right, and I'm a technology guy and I firmly believe this. It's just a tool. All right, so I have uh, two different practices, two practices in Greenville, Wisconsin, Orthodontic Specialist Green Bay. Uh, there's three doctors here, myself, Dr. Bilkowski, Dr. Jay Frazier. We have 22 clinical chairs between the two practices. We have two three-shaped color trios intraoral scanners, one monochrome trios intraoral scanner, one iCAT flex. So at that practice, the practice I'm at currently right now today is the only imaging that we have. At the east side practice, we have one instrumentarium digital stuff pan. We have four 3D printers that we're currently using right now, two structural dental forms, one Envision Tech Vita, one Form 2, and one Envision Tech 1. All right, and that's actually five. The Form 2 actually has been replaced. It's been put to, put to retirement. We also have another practice in Appleton, Wisconsin, which is about 20 minutes south of us. And there is Dr. Tomasetti, myself, and Dr. Eichos. That's a smaller practice, but we have six clinical chairs. We also have three, one three-shaped color trios, one monochrome trios, and we only have one iCAT flex. We are completely digital, paperless. We do not take any impressions at all, and we... Uh, basically intraoral scan and 3D print everything for whether it's appliances, aligners, retainers, et cetera. Okay, so to get to this point, in, in an hour or lecture, I don't have time to go through our history, but this book here, I think, Thank You for Being Late by Thomas Friedman, the New York Times number one bestseller. It's truly how I feel I've been living my life for the past 20 years, since 1999, after I graduated from orthodontic residency. And uh, uh, Thomas Friedman coined the phrase, um, right here on the screen, you see this quote, the great acceleration, and it's the impact of technology that has impacted the way we live our daily lives, whether it's social media, uh, desktops, laptops, cell phones, etc. okay, and it's just, it's, it's been a challenge, I feel, to try to evaluate these technologies, learn how to use them just on a daily basis, but then also how to learn how to implement them into your practices. So I'm going to share with you some of the technologies that we use that I firmly believe in, okay? 
So innovative, disruptive, and transformative technology is what we've been talking about. You know, it goes all the way back when, you know, I started playing around with self-ligation back in uh, 19, 1997 when I was a residency at Northwestern University. I'm a firm believer in self-ligation. We've settled on the American Empower too, just because the cost effective, it's a good looking bracket, it's efficient, the doors stay on, we have wings that we can use auxiliary mechanics with, and it saves us clinical time, all right? TAD, TAD's a big part of my practice. Uh, I use it for all class two, class three, open bike corrections. I'll show you a, a few cases here today we're using TADs actually. Um, sure smile, I think anybody knows me, We've been a sure small practice since 2004, so it's already been over 15 years, which is scary. It means I'm getting old, but we use it for 100% for all full cases, labiolingual, and actually 90% of our liner cases are done with sure small liners now. Um, a firm believer, I was an early doctor in Cone Beam CT uh, back in 2005 when we first got our first. Um, without a doubt, I firmly believe it makes us better diagnosticians so that we can create better treatment plans. And we have also combined this to be able to be utilized with sure smile so that we can see the roots, the crowns, in the bone. So we, I firmly believe, get better treatment results. All right, intro scanning, we've already discussed. No more impressions. All right, that's my belief. And then 3D printing. Uh, EZRX. This was something that we adopted probably just under two years ago. But ER, EZRX is a digital appliance prescription management software application between the clinic and labs. We have two full orthodontic labs in our practice, so we really don't send anything out. But, you know, you can send things out to specialty appliances, NEO, uh, a AOA Pro um, in uh, Racine, Wisconsin. Um, but the, the great thing about the software is it, it syncs with any practice management system, and it allows us to track all these different intraoral scans and lab appliances that we're fabricating for them. So it truly has made our lives that much more efficient and simpler. And we don't have to run all these different Excel tracking sheet reports that we used to run. And a big guy jump too, really for me, has been uh, V Pro 5, which is now V Pro 5, 5, V Pro Plus, the new improved version. All right, so before we get into everything, I, I'm a firm believer in the open source. You know, um, I think you have to have an open source platform. If you don't, you limit yourself to different technologies that can use. The other thing is, what if it's not the best technology out there? You're locked in, all right? And I think all of us understand with the things that have happened with uh, aligned technologies that, uh, you know, with the closed course system, uh, that there are things that we can do uh, nowadays, which I'm gonna share with you this evening, especially with aligners, in a much more efficient and cost-effective manner. All right, so, all right. Innovative, disruptive, and transformative technologies. You know, there's three main, main uh, technologies out there which make the claims that we can uh, speed up bone remodeling, move teeth faster. One is ortho, ortho pulse, BioLux, it's a laser, there's no vibration. Um, research has shown that it does work, all right? However, the issue I have with this is no vibration because I firmly believe in the vibrations being important, especially for uh, seating aligners and also for uh, uh, making things a little bit more comfortable during the course of treatment for both fixed cases as well as aligner cases. Accelerant Aura, we started with Accelerant, like I said, probably about three and a half years ago. And good device, issue there in my opinion is very expensive. And I think there is a little bit of difference between the low frequency vibration and the high frequency vibration. I didn't do the scientific data research, I'll summarize it, but clinically it is what I'm seeing, okay? And now there's the V Pro Plus. All right, and that's what we use 100%, okay? Um, the science behind vibration, so, Vibration with bone has been studied intensely for decades. It started with an early space program. Um, historical and current ongoing research demonstrates bone cells are more responsive to higher frequencies. All right, way back in 1945, the Naval Academy, um, effect, they did a research study on the effects of vibration upon the dental pulp and periosteum of white rats. All right, 1972, uh, University of Kentucky study looked at the effects of mechanical vibration on bone again in the rat, all right? And then there has been recently a 10-year methodical investigation differentiating vibration profiles, and these have all been published. Okay, I'm not gonna go through every single one of them, but we are gonna review some of them. All right, so if you look here on this slide here, osteogenic effects of high-frequency acceleration on the alveolar bone. 
and it looks at low frequency at 30 at 30 hertz 60 hertz and 100 hertz okay and you have to remember v pro 5 is 100 v pro plus is 120 hertz all right and in the absence of orthodontic force where you're just trying to stimulate the bone the research shows that it has an anabolic uh, anabolic effect all right which means it stimul stimulates osteoblastic activity all right and the high frequency shows that nearly double bone volume versus low frequency. All right, another study here. Role of mechanical stimulation and recovery of bone loss. So high versus low frequency. Mechanical stress can cause adaptive responses by bone. These findings can be formed into mathematical laws cal calculating a strain stimulus is a function of both strain, magnitude, and frequency. Bone response to mechanical signals seems to correlate to increased frequency, so higher vibrational frequency. All right, so another study, high frequency acceleration therapeutic tool to preserve bone following tooth extractions, showing that in a control study with nothing going on, 53% um, of bone height loss. All right, at 120 hertz, uh, safe during fragile bone formation and an increased bone volume, 44% after extraction versus the control. All right, another study showed vibration, paradox, and orthodontics, anabolic and catabolic effects. So looked at low frequency as well as high frequency, and what it determined was that high frequency, or different frequencies actually de would deliver different results. But high frequency increased rate of movement significantly versus low frequency in controls. Uh, so with uh, orthodontic force, high frequency will stimulate a catabolic, so that means osteoclastic activity, as well as anabolic osteoblastic activity with increased density. All right, and again here, the same study, different, uh, uh, different frequencies, again, deliver different results. High frequency nearly double bone, bone volume versus low frequency, okay? And again, so here we are stimulating anabolic, anabolic osteo, osteoblastic activity without orthodontic force. Okay, so in retention, for example. All right, impact of occlusal force on the acceleration delivered by two commercially available uh, orthodontic vibratory devices. So the effective force delivered by device, red is obviously accelerant here, blue is V-Pro-5, one pound, two pound, four pound. Okay, so what it's showing here is that uh, higher acceleration at each simulated bite force tested and low frequency showed near undetectable acceleration at four pounds of bite force. So that's right here, all right? So again, again, different frequencies deliver different results and there's greater results with higher frequency vibration. All right, another study here, uh, differential efficacy of two vibrating orthodontic devices to alter the cellular response in osteoblast, fibroblast, and osteoclast. So again, yellow is accelerant, uh, the green is V Pro 5, and the key findings of the, the study showed that peak accelerations generated by V Pro 5 were 70% greater, right here, than those generated by accelerant. All right, and the same study here, again, yellow is accelerant, green is V Pro 5. The key findings here were that greater vibration frequency and peak accelerations of V Pro 5 coincided with greater cellular proliferation. Gene expression in human periodontal ligament, fibroblast, and osteoblast. So stimulating bone remodeling as well as tooth movement. All right, and then uh, again in the same study, the, the conclusion came to the difference in vibration profiles induced by the two devices is striking, quoted by Dr. Steve Stefan Judas. All right, and I'm not the researcher, but I'm just telling you from what I see in my own patients. I believe firmly the high frequency helps us see the aligners better. I believe that there are some pretty significant improvements with bone remodeling. And I'm going to show a couple of surgical cases that I treated non-surgically with V-Pro5 at the end here, which I think will demonstrate that case. And again, this is just my clinical evaluation. I'm not claiming any evidence-based research that I've personally done except for what I'm seeing clinically with my patients. All right, effective high frequency acceleration device on aligner treatment, pilot study. So, you know, it's showing that high frequency allows subjects 66% faster exchange than 14-day controls. 
32% faster exchange in a seven-day program call. So significantly fewer refinements and control subjects, significantly shortened treatment times. So I'm just going to let you guys know, the way my philosophy is set up is, you know, because you got to factor cost into everything. But D Pro 5, first of all, is half the cost of what we used to pay for Accelerate, so much more cost effective. But the other thing too is as a result of that, it, it doesn't, the patients are not prohibited with the cost of, of doing it. But what I've decided to do in my practice is any aligner case under six months, we give them the option if they want to do Z Pro 5, but any aligner case over six months, it's an automatic because patients I feel get burned out after six months and they just want to get things done. And so we just include it in the cost. All right. All right. High frequency reduced root resorption. So this study showed that um, high frequency subjects typically show non significant root resorption in all teeth. Control subjects typically uh, show significant root resorption in all teeth. So I, I'm not certain exactly how much that root resorption is, but they're showing it obviously with uh, um, CBCT. Vpro5 demonstrated to be root protective, which may be beneficial for at risk patients. All right. Um, H, uh, high frequency vibration improved accuracy and tracking. Again, clinically, uh, the re this research study is showing that that's proving that VPRO5 is showing better track uh, tracking than anything else that's available currently on the market. I personally, clinically, am seeing this too as well. All right, patient discomfort. Um, without a doubt, I, I saw patient discomfort improving with Accelerant, but I think I'm seeing it even more with uh, VPRO5. I think the patients, they complement, they call it the tooth massager. Uh, it, it makes sense to me, you know, <laughs> it feels to get your neck massaged, right? All right, um, high frequency has, vibration has also changed the biology, biology of tooth movement, increasing bone modeling markers significantly. All right, and so this study showed um, significant increase in bone remodel, remodeling markers, cytokines. And they looked at it 14 days, seven day, the sham is just a non-functional VPRO5 device, seven day with VPRO5, Five day with a D Pro 5, D Pro Plus. Okay. And you're showing the uh, increase here, right there. All right. The effects of brief daily vibration on clear aligner orthodontic movement. So used for five minutes a day, which is much better than 20 minutes a day, which used to be used with Accelerant. And I, I, I had actually switched two patients from Accelerant into D Pro 5, both adult patients. And they both, their first comment was they love the fact that it was five minutes instead of 20 minutes. So B Pro 5 can improve accuracy while reducing interval between the liner changes. B Pro 5 also significantly reduced pain and discomfort. B Pro 5 also significantly increased bone remodeling markers and cytokines. All right, so again, different frequencies equals different results. And cells are more responsive to higher frequencies. So that's basically the results of all these studies. Um, effect of 120 hertz high frequency acceleration device on orthodontic discomfort. It shows here that with five minutes, immediate orthodontic pain relief, 83% of subjects recommend or highly recommend uh, high frequency vibrational devices. All right, and uh, this was a four site observational trial. All right. Um, this is not my patient, but this is uh, a patient of uh, Dr. Thomas Shipley. Uh, I thought this was interesting. Uh, he had patients who obviously stopped wearing their retainer. Well, they showed them, he tried to seat the uh, retainer, and that's where it was going, all right? obviously interferences. So retreatment was not agreeable to the patient's father. So Dr. Shipley decided to try and use uh, VPRO Plus or VPRO 5 for five minutes in office and look at the improvement in seating there. And then uh, after four months, was able to get it completely seated without any, without creating another liner. So I've never done anything like that, but I thought this was a very interesting. Um, so bottom line, high frequency vibration with VPRO Plus it increases the liner seating, reduces pain, reduces refinements for aligners, reduces treatment time, uh, increases bone remodeling, and uh, increases bone density with retention without an orthodontic force because it's anabolic. All right, uh, with the VPRO Plus unit, you know, they we did have some breakage issues with the uh, with the VPRO 5, and they have, have claimed that they've improved the durability of this unit. We've now been using it for several months. I think it's been about four, maybe five months now, 
And we've not had, not had any breakage issues with this. Um, the nice thing is also waterproof. Wireless charging, it's got an app, compact travel case, and it's just simple and efficient for the patients to carry with and move around and for us to track too as well. All right, uh, this was an article published in uh, Orthodontic Practice last year in September, October Journal. Uh, you look here at the initial stuff, it's a class two open bite. There was an implant that was placed here and you can see the bone is not very dense in that area there. Now you look here at the final records, the, the, uh, the uh, bite has been closed, class two has been corrected. And look at the bone here, it's stimulated with antibiotic activity with uh, increasing, increasing bone density. All right, so how do you handle da damaged units is the question. And I'm just gonna tell you, they've been great with uh, damaged units with us. Um, all we do is we let them know. Uh, we give the, we, ha we, we this, this last order, we purchased 200 V-Pro V -Pro Plus units. Um, so what we've just been doing is giving the patients a new unit. We, we send the broken unit into uh, V-Pro 5, V-Pro uh, Propel, and they, uh, they basically send us a new one at no cost. All right, so I compliment on their uh, standing behind their product and also with their support there. All right, so let's look at some cases here now. All right, th this is my patient, Bonnie, here. And Bonnie here, she's an interesting case. I, I've been uh, testing out several different types of aligner software companies. And, you know, we, we actually don't use Invisalign at all anymore. I haven't used Invisalign for six years now, believe it or not. And um, I decided to use this uh, company called 3D Smiles out of Russia. They're based out of Russia and uh, Israel. They have a headquarters in Moscow and also in Tel Aviv. And um, we work with their lab to set this up, all right? So we started v 5 treatment start was July of 2018, so not even a year ago. All right, she had a bridge here. So obviously with the bridge there, unless we're gonna segment it, which she does not want us to do, we have to make sure we do not disturb the occlusion over here. So this is what we do here. This is the 3D smile setup. And you see we're opening up the bite, getting the midline to come together. All right, we look at it from the occlusal view here. I gotta reorientate this for you so you can see it. Um, there was some IPR plan in both upper and lower. Obviously some dental expansion too as well. And that's where things played out. Okay, um, just so you're all aware, when we, this, this is just our customized aligner forms. We give this to every single patient when we start uh, on aligner cases, so they're aware of how to handle everything with instructions, how to keep things clean, all right? What to do if there's broken aligners. All right, and look at this. Basically four and a half months of treatment. And this is with uh, working with the company, 3D Smile. You know, their software is, is not as functional as what I like to see with uh, SureSmile, or even with this line clean check in the old days. But look at the change here in just four and a half months of treatment. All right, I think that's pretty impressive. Um, there's still some minor alignment issues that we have to deal with here. And just to show you the treatment card, you know, what I ended up doing is we placed SEPs. Uh, it was uh, probably, they didn't put down here, but it's probably just before to four, four to four. And you gotta remember surface area is important because the lower anteriors are smaller than the maxillary. And so it all tracks better with the uppers because of the bigger teeth. We uh, delivered uh, a lower stuff down retainer, Essex ASO 3 o um, a week later. And then uh, about five weeks later, we started with their aligners. This is not sure smile aligners. Again, this is 3D smiles. I think that system just wasn't familiar with what we were doing there. And there were a total of 16 on top, 19 on the bottom. Okay, and then what we did here, we gave some additional, I probably did a little additional IPR about six weeks later. And then in October, what we ended up doing was uh, delivering the rest of the liner. I might have just been on a little IPR again and putting some of the contacts to make sure there's no binding. And then you can see down here in December, so right before Christmas, we manicured, and removed the attachments and re-scanned her. And then um, we're moving her into actually sure smile liners now. So I just decided to move into sure smile liners just because it's easier for us. We do all the setups ourselves. We have a full digital lab, six full-time employees now who work on our, all our lab appliances. And here's the uh, setup here. 
Again, we're really trying to minimize any posterior occlusal changes. And you'll see here, there's basically no movement here. And this is the lower archer. So there's another 10 aligners on the bottom. And now let's go to the top here. So really it's all more rotational than anything else. And go to the bottom here. And this is all being done real time. Okay, I'm just recording it obviously on my computer screen. All right, and then I actually just saw Bonnie just uh, last week, and we gave her all of her aligners, um, and we'll see where she finishes up. But I think it should be a fairly straightforward case, and she's probably going to be done in about uh, 10 weeks. All right, so that'll be under probably right around seven months total treatment time. All right, so let's look at the next case. So I, I don't know for all of you, but um, you look at this patient here, very constricted maximum mandibular arches. A uh, little cross bite right here on the right sixes, maybe upper right five, two as well. Um, they came in, he and his wife, his wife's actually a general dentist. I treated her as well. Um, they come in May, end of May, and she tells me, this is my fiance, Jared. We're getting married December 31st, and I want him to have a nicer smile for, for his wedding photos, for the wedding and the wedding photos. And I'm like, oh, man, could you have given me a little bit more time? So I talked to them about... Uh, Getting into braces, full braces as quickly as possible, just because I feel with wires we can develop the arch form faster with the Pro 5, and then um, and then taking the braces off and then finishing off with the liners. So let's see how this played out. So we got started June 12th, so I had just a little over six months, <laughs> right around six months basically, to get the braces off. All right, this is two months, four days treatment. I'm doing the sure smell scan. All right, we're treating with V Pro 5. You can already see the improvement with the arch development, obviously the alignment of teeth, okay? It was in a 16 round wire, I believe, at that point in time. This is five months, 29 days, December 11th, and I basically debonded all the brackets. You know, little minor alignment issues here. You need to work here. He's still a little posterior edge to edge in this area here. All right. Um, so look at the change here. Five months, 29 days. All right. And then uh, I just, Jared did not come back in to see me again until last week, too, as well. Um, so I was supposed to see him in January, but I think he got busy with work and maybe the after the honeymoon. So we just got him started with the liners. And honestly, I actually prefer, if we're doing these hybrid cases, I actually prefer getting the braces off when the teeth are still mobile and then trying to get in those liners maybe two to three weeks at the most afterwards. Okay, that was the original plan, but he rescheduled. Okay, so we include um, V-Pro, V-Pro uh, Plus now, with all liner patients over six months of treatment, the cost is built into the treatment cost. I'm just gonna let you guys know, when we buy 200 units, we basically pay about $300. All right, and that includes the cost of the mouthpiece too as well, per unit, okay? Um, High frequency vibration is very cost effective, VPRO Plus compared to its competitors. Uh, helps to reduce orthodontic discomfort during treatment. And again, I really truly believe it helps to see the liners. Okay. We all have non compliant patients. If you say you don't, you're lying. Um, I personally have treated probably to completion over 2,000 liner patients since 1999. All right. And uh, compliance is always an issue with both teenagers as well as some adults. <coughs> okay. So look at this patient here. My patient, Ben. He is only in his uh, late 20s when he came in. Class three out, the anterior edge to edge, bilateral posterior cross bites, and he's got bilateral posterior open bites. He's beating the heck out of his front teeth here. <coughs> Excuse me here. All right, so I gave him uh, two options for treatment. Ideal option was full braces with two jaw surgery. Max 33 piece support with expansion, advances, mandibular setback, and counterclockwise rotation of the mandible. <coughs> uh, second option, full braces with two mandibular pads to dislodge 
his lower posterior is Z Pro 5 for non surgical treatment. All right, so let's see how this turns out because this is the option he, he chose. All right, so because of the crossbite, I had to put him into expander. You can already see right here, this is several millimeters of expansion. So this is an adult patient. He also wanted lingual. So I've got lingual up at five to five, ceramics on the bottom lower three to three. You can see down here, I distalized his 12 year molars. I placed the tads here and I've got them just medial to the sevens. And now I'm just doing a mass subtraction. Look what's happening. He's got positive over jet. He's no longer beating the heck out of his anteriors. And he's not that far off, you guys, from class one now. And I've got all this space in the back still here. All right. And then look here. I actually overcorrected on his right side here. All right. He's still open here. But now I'm going to be putting the arch wire. I'm going to take the tads out, put the arch wires in the sevens. I'm going to have him run vertical elastics in the back here. Okay. Uh, he's, I forgot to mention he was also in sure smile. We did the sure smile scan actually that day. And now look what's happening here. All right, I'm on to the sixes and the sevens. Look how he's coming together. This is what we call virtual wire bend. So at this appointment, I obviously want to sock this in a little bit better. Um, I'm just sitting in the chair and I'm just using the software, doing a little fine tuning, punch in measurements. I do this all myself. Hit order. Whenever we have a virtual wire bending appointment, we also have a virtual wire insert appointment three weeks later. Um, they all know this goes hand in hand and we get them back. I had to do a second set of virtual wire bends. This is still better. You can see the clear buttons. I think he lost this one here. But look at this left side here. That's not too bad, especially with the bilateral posterior cross bites and open bites. I also actually want you to focus on the tissue, the periodontion back here. Maybe a little minor recession there. And there's the finished case, the day of the debond. All right. 17.5 months treatment for a non-surgical case, non-surgical expansion. I mean, this is where the tissue, the everything looks. This is three months later. You know, if he has to do a little grafting here, considering we treat him non-surgically, not a big deal. All right. And I did actually eat. I actually left. I was, I was flying back. We were actually in spring break last week. I got stuck in that cyclone bomb in Colorado uh, last Wednesday. But I, I left Ben a, a voicemail asking if he'd email me a personal testimonial. He did. And I said, just be honest. Tell me what you think about switching from cell to V Pro 5. And he said, V Pro 5 works very well for me while I had braces. Five minutes a day was very easy to work into my schedule. I felt it helped my teeth move easier and quicker to the de desired spots. Early on, after getting my braces tightened, I felt like the V Pro 5 also helped with the pain to relax my mouth, especially the first couple days after an appointment. Thanks, Ben. All right, so uh, this uh, young lady here, all right, so Becky, she is actually, um, she's a nurse. My brother's a radiologist. She actually worked with my brother at, at the hospital in Lapson. But uh, you can see she's a class two, and then class two, deep bite, div two. So she's got an upper left six that's been extracted. I did give her a surgical option. She chose not to do the surgical option. So what I'm doing here now, is I'm distalizing here. I've got a tad here. This is indirect anchorage, so nothing's moving forward. Everything's moving back. You got bite turbos, tip back strings to help open up the bite. And I'm closing up this, this extraction site here. All right. Max volume molars are typically about 12, 13 molars and 13 millimeters in width. That's a big space, right? So treatment start was May 15th of 2018. Look at the distalization, the bite, uh, the, the bite is opening up here. I've got buttons here on the lingual chain up on top. Look at how much space is closed. This is only, what is it, four months and five days. And I'm moving a big molar. I mean, it, it, I, I think that it's amazing actually. And I've got her actually on class two elastics too as well. But I don't, I don't think you'd see this type of movement if you didn't have some sort of high frequency vibration device like Z-Pro Plus. All right, and this is just her treatment card. She decided the day we did in, uh, the internal scan for the sure smell and direct bonding uh, 3D printer trays that she wanted to go with V Pro 5. And look here, May had an emergency, saw her in June. I just changed the chain, 
saw in August, that was a longer appointment, we moved her from a 16 round wire to 16 squared wires. All right. Activate the open coil spring on the upper right side and dislodge her upper right seven. Uh, the crown came off. We had to send her to the dentist, re, re it. Or, or the lower right six, I'm sorry, the lower right six bracket came off the crown, excuse me. Um, and then uh, in September, you know, I got class two elastics, as I mentioned, moved her uh, into a new 16 squared, uh, squared wire, rebonded the six here. Uh, and that was the photo that I showed you previously. All right, and after distillation, I'm going to be taking that pad out right here and then moving it back mesial to the seven. And then I'll use that as an anchor to pull everything back on that right side there for non surgical treatment. All right, Amy is a funny lady. All right, she comes in, she loves to laugh, she hates her smile. She also knew that she was banging on her front teeth. Um, and she was starting to get concerned with that. So she's got crossbite on the right side full, also back here in the sixes and sevens. Obviously bilateral, posterior open bites as well. And she's, you know, maybe a weak class one here, weak class two, whatever you can call it. End on class two here. All right, so initial records, we gave her two options for treatment. Full braces with two jaw surgery with a max of three piece report with expansion advancement, posterior impaction, and mandibular advancement with counterclockwise rotation of her mandible. All right. We also gave her a non surgical option with full braces with an expander, one maxillary pad because of the right class two, and then two mandibular pads um, because I needed to try and uh, get her posteriors to come together. Okay. So let's see. And, and we also gave her V-Pro 5 with treatment. That's when, I, when I'm doing these non-surgical uh, expansions, there's no choice in the matter. I'm only going to use V-Pro Plus. All right. So look, let's look at this. So what we end up doing is we end up putting bite turtles on, the upper sixes and sevens. We're expanding here. You see there's a few millimeters of expansion in the expansion speed. Um, bite is propped open. I've also got open coil springs here, and I'm distalizing our sevens. All right, and then what I'm doing now, because she's got an open bite tendency, is I'm placing the tad and I'm intruding the molars here. Okay, now let's see what happens here. All right, treatment start was July 2017, July 12, 2017. All right, uh, this is progress of May 24, 2018. So we're only a little over, what, 10 months of treatment there? Look at how this come together. All right. We're, uh, we did the sure smell. She was actually in sure smell wires at this point in time. And now she's still in the sure smell wires. And look how everything's come together here right now. Again, look at the tissue, periodontal, the gingival tissue looks healthy. All right, I've got some space I need to close in the back here. All right, and I'm just going to let you guys know, if I don't get all this space closed on the day of the Devon, I'm still going to take the braces off, and then what I'm going to do is I'll scan her, and I'll, I'll use aligners to finish her up. Again, hybrid treatment there. All right. Her D-bond is actually scheduled uh, May 26, 2019. Again, we got her started July 12, 2017. Non-surgical case, that amount of crowding, bilateral posterior crossbite, bilateral posterior open bite. We'll finish in under two years treatment time. Okay. So again, just a summary of uh, high frequency vibration with VPRO Plus, aligner seating is improved, pain reduced, refinements are reduced, treatment time reduced, bone remodeling is increased, and retention bone density is increased because uh, it's anabolic, increasing bone density without orthodontic force versus catabolic when uh, there is orthodontic force. All right, so to summarize everything, um, this is from a book called The Tipping Point, and I firmly believe in this because uh, the digital age is upon us in orthodontics. Now, I've been promoting it for 20 years now, uh, but to create one con contagious movement, you often have to create many small movements first, all right? And um, Malcolm Gladwell is the author. He actually is a professor in law school uh, at my own modern University of Chicago. But The Tipping Point is that magic moment when an idea, trend, or social behavior crosses the threshold, tips and spreads like wildfire. 
So I'd just like to recognize some individuals who I feel have tipped my world and made me a better orthodontist. And I consider all these individuals my mentors. And that's first of all, Dr. Vince Kokich. And I know we, we all know Dr. Kokich, a brilliant individual, phenomenal clinician, really impacted with, uh, I think, in, impacted all of us with the, uh, uh, the the value of communication, especially with interdisciplinary cases. All right. The second individual that I'd like to recognize is Dr. David Sarver out of Birmingham, Alabama. You know, I took Dr. Sarver's course way back when, when I was a young orthodontist back in probably 2000, 2001. And he really get, opened up my eyes in regards to the smile arc, as well as the orthodontics perspective of uh, surgical orthodontic surgery. All right. Um, I'd also like to recognize Dr. Bill Arnett. Uh, I, I took his course twice with uh, probably three different oral surgeons, trying to get an oral surgeon to follow his protocols. And I've taken his foundation course several times. Um, Dr. Arnett has is, is, is got, he developed a system for predictable facial and uh, occlusal results. And we really truly follow his, uh, his system to a T. We, use, we still use his Arnett uh, protocol in Dolphin. Dolphin. And uh, he really, I think, made myself a better orthodontist from a surgical standpoint, as well as, as helping me to, uh, to uh, get ortho oral surgeons in our area here to follow his protocols to, to benefit our patients. And then the final individual I'd like to recognize is Dr. Roach Steva. He really rocked my world in regards to uh, true digital orthodontics for labial, lingual. Um, he opened up my mind and... Uh, Forever, uh, I, I consider my true mentor. Ton of respect for him. He was, he was the founder of SureSmile, and uh, I thank you, Dr. Siva, Arnett, uh, Sarver, and Kokich for all that you've done for me over the years. All right. So uh, going back to an in conclusion now, I, I firmly believe these digital ecosystems. You know, even the way we're communicating tonight with the webinar, um, they're changing our world. And uh, Fortune 500 companies like Home Depot and Fiat. Uh, Everybody, they've all responded to it. So my belief is hardware and software, especially software, are the driving forces behind the future of our orthodontic profession. All right, we as a profession need to continue to embrace technologies that will improve our diagnosis, treatment planning, and quality of care for our patients. All right, we're healthcare providers. Let's make things better. And then mastering these digital orthodontics technologies and creating efficient digital uh, business and clinical workflow systems is truly what will differentiate us from our competition, which today includes general dentists, pediatric dentists, and makes us true specialists in orthodontics. We can't keep doing it the way it was done 20 years ago. All right, if you do it, you're gonna become obsolete in my opinion. All right, I firmly believe the technologies have made, made myself, my partners, all of us better clinicians, if you ask any of them, I think all would adamantly agree to that. And uh, I think we all need to keep working together like we're doing tonight and share our experiences with everybody, okay? So, um, as I mentioned, I was just on spring break last week. We, uh, we skied out in Vales, my son and daughter, Olivia and Royce. Um, uh, so proud of them. They, they, they rocked it in the back pools of Vail um, and did a phenomenal job. My son is actually, he's got no fear. He's only 10, but he's already a better skier than me. All right. So, um, Finally, I want to thank everybody for your time and attention and uh, um, uh, for attending the webinar. And then I'd, I'd like to just uh, let you all know that there can be questions that, and, answer, and I'll do my best to answer those. So uh, if there are any questions, please uh, feel free to type them in. And uh, I, will, I will answer them. Okay, so Dr. Bill Crutchfield, hello my friend. In your opinion, would you recommend high frequency vibration therapy for the orthodontic patient who's periodontally compromised to safeguard against further bone loss during treatment? Absolutely. Um, you know, I, those two non-surgical cases I showed, and you know, I forgot to mention, you know, that Marfi now has become all the rage, but man, I looked into that thing and there's like four huge tads that get placed. I think they're like 14 millimeters in length. And I can't even remember, like three millimeters in diameter or something like that. 
and you just keep turning and turning and turning, and it separates the suture into pops. That's got to hurt so much. You know, again, I don't have the, the clinical evidence to show you. I'm only just, except for what my, my practice has shown, but I do believe that it helps to stimulate bone. I mean, you know, I just showed you two non-surgical cases with both with bilateral posterior crossbites, both with several millimeters of expansion, all right, and, and the finished results, okay? So um, I hope that answers your question, Bill. And thank you for the question and for attending the uh, webinar. Are there any other questions here? All right, then, uh, Blaze, I, I assume that Blaze is the IT guy who's helped me very much. Thank you, Blaze, for all your help in getting this set up. I assume that that will uh, conclude everything. Then, and again, thanks, everybody, and I uh, hope you all have a great evening, okay? All right, bye-bye.